Catania is a lively, ancient port city. It is steeped in tradition and yet it has continually evolved throughout the centuries as it's been hit by earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Continually rebuilding itself while keeping its heritage alive makes Catania the vibrant, bustling place that it is today. Come and explore the beautiful buildings, ruins, bustling markets and an exciting food scene and nightlife with me. One of the things you have to do while in Catania is to climb the cupola. Located on the Piazza del Duomo, you will find the Badia de Sant'Agata. 170 steps will take you to the top, although you can stop halfway. These steps are really narrow. You can climb the church every single day, but be warned that it is closed between 12.30 and 3 p.m. Here you can enjoy a breathtaking 360 degree view of the city. It costs 5 euros to climb and the views at the top are absolutely breathtaking. Mount Etna dominates the skyline in Catania and is visible from many streets, the park and of course stunning views at the top of the church. In the same square and in front of the cathedral is the Elephant Fountain. This is currently being restored in 2024, but I managed a sneaky peek through the gap in the scaffolding and from above. The elephant has become a symbol of the city, so I'll be sure to take a closer look when I return. While we were at the top, the bells on the clock tower of the neighbouring building, the Cathedral of St Agatha, rang out at midday. It was remarkable to hear alongside the incredible views. It is wonderful. The church was built in the 18th century and was actually erected on a former site of a church that was destroyed during an earthquake. The facade is Baroque in style, as are many of the buildings in the centre. My favourite place to visit in Catania, tucked just behind the Piazza del Duomo, is the fish market. The best time to visit is early to mid-morning and, by starting your day in this historic marketplace, you get a real sense of what life in Catania is like. The market is home to the freshest, best produce from meat, cheeses, fruit and vegetables and, of course, it specialises in the freshest fish and seafood you could possibly imagine. It's the craziest, busiest marketplace I have ever visited and it is easy to see why Catania has such a remarkable food scene given the abundance of fresh food that is available. The market runs Monday to Saturday and on a Sunday you can visit the same area for a flea market. The flea market is very popular with locals and you can also grab a bite to eat. I got a real sense here that the people are incredibly passionate about the food that they produce. Mmm, tasty. <laughs> the fish market is also lined with places to eat and you're really spoilt for choice. From restaurants under the suspended umbrellas to awesome tasting street food, this is a food lover's paradise. One place I'd like to mention is Sirocco, the Sicilian fish lab. They fry fresh fish and are famous for their boneless fish cones, amongst other local dishes. The first dish we tried was a caponata. Which is a cold dish containing swordfish, aubergine and peppers. Um, and then we had this one. It is so delicious. We also ordered a boneless fish cone and octopus salad. But we now have our octopus salad and our fried fish and it is absolutely delicious. Really fresh. It was bustling inside and with so many wonderful flavours it's easy to see why. Another place that I'd like to mention is the urban barbecue. Well, that was absolutely fantastic. The atmosphere was buzzing and the food was the highest quality. We really enjoyed eating here, both during the daytime and at night. One thing you should be sure to buy at the market is a fresh punnet of strawberries. We bought some fresh strawberries at the market. Wow.
They're so red and juicy. It's easy to spend hours strolling the streets of Catania. Many of the buildings are rough and ready, but they are full of character. And there are lots of lovely balconies. Nearly everywhere you go, you can see Mount Etna. Heading back towards the Piazza del Duomo, you can already see the Cathedral of Sant'Agata, which dominates the square. A Duomo has stood on this site since the 10th century, although it originally would have looked entirely different. It has been destroyed and rebuilt several times because of damage caused by Mount Etna and earthquakes. The cathedral is named after Saint Agata, the patron saint of Catania. A traditional Sicilian pastry celebrating Saint Agatha originated from this area and so I had to try one while we were here. It has a sponge base, ricotta and chocolate drop filling and is topped with icing and a candied cherry. There is a fantastic choice of pastries, cakes and tarts at Pan del Sol. I wanted to try one of everything. Castella Orsino is a Norman castle built in the 13th century. Due to a large volcanic eruption, you can see remnants of lava on the ground. It has had many uses throughout the years, from military to a prison. It now houses a museum. As we headed towards the monastery and the church of San Nicolo Loreno, we spotted the cutest Fiat 500. We nicknamed her the Bait Beam. This is the largest church in Sicily. Via Crotrifery is one of the oldest streets in Catania and is a short walk from the main square. There are four impressive churches located on this street and they are all built within 200 metres of each other. Let's talk food. In Catania, many people will dine late in the evening. Many will stop for an aperitivo first and we enjoyed visiting Magna Sicily for some food and three Euro cocktails on several occasions. Cheers! When I say that Catania comes to life at night, what I mean is that there is clearly a deep-rooted love of food here. The produce is fantastically fresh and businesses take real pride in what they serve. From restaurants to street food, taking time to savour mouth-watering food is at the heart of the culture. Catania is full of history and near the heart of the city lies the ruins of a Roman amphitheatre built in the 2nd century. If you enjoy visiting ruins, then you can follow a free digital tour on your smartphone. Using the QR code, you can navigate your way around the city, exploring the historical sites of interest. This is the Opera House, located in Piazza Vincenzo Bellini. Catania Flea Market is another traditional market in the city, packed with fresh food and other daily necessities. It's bustling. While we were there, we bought some delicious olives, which we decided to enjoy in the nearby public park. Villa Bellini Gardens is the oldest and largest park in Catania. It dates back to the 18th century and, although it is fairly small, it is filled with some interesting statues, fountains, bandstand and beautiful plants and trees. It's a great place to stop and unwind away from the hustle and bustle of the city. It also has a lovely view of Mount Etna. If you'd like some hints and tips about travelling to and from Catania, then please do subscribe to my channel. While staying in Catania, we were blown away by the fresh produce, but also the fantastic hospitality and the passion locals had for their food. I hope that you found this video about Catania helpful. I'm signing off by mentioning one last place, which is Opera Prima. I don't think I need to say much more, just look at that cheesecake. I recently closed my bricks and mortar store to start selling online. This will free up my time to visit one city every single week. Subscribe to my channel to follow my adventures. Next up is Syracuse. <laughs> Too hard. <laughs>